church of God a kingdom is, where Christ in power doth reign, where spirits yearn to seed in bliss, the Lord shall come again. An altar stands within the shrine, when on one sacrificed is set immaculate divine, the Lamb of God the Christ. There rich and poor from countless lands praise God on mystic root. The nations reach forth holy hands to take God's holy food. Their pure life-giving streams or flow, the soul's garden ground, and faith and love fair blossom show, and fruits of love abound. O King, O Christ, this endless grace to all your people bring, to see the vision of thy face in joy, O Christ our King. Welcome to the Church of St. John the Evangelist in Inverness. Welcome to members of the congregation and to any others who are joining us online as we continue to um, have these services, these celebrations of the Eucharist um, with you all at home and me here. And I do hope that you will still have that sense of worship and the presence of Jesus Christ with you. As you see, we have moved to the colour green for this season, which I like still to call Sundays after Trinity. In modern lectionaries, it's often referred to as Sundays in ordinary time. But of course, the Eucharist is never ordinary. And I pray that this morning you will have that sense of spiritual comfort, the word comfort that speaks both of ease and of strength as we continue to cope with the restrictions of these times. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed 
and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You in their vocation and ministry may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your holy name through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen A reading in the book of Genesis The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favour with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to, to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advancing in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? 
At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, and God commanded him. Abraham was was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. A reading in St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the Lord, the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thy kingdom come, O God, thy rule, O Christ, begin. Break with thine iron rod the tyrannies of sin. Where is thy reign of peace and purity and love? When shall all hatred cease, as in the realms above? We pray thee, Lord, arise, and come in thy great might. Revive thy longing eyes, which languish for thy sight. O'er lands both near and far, thick darkness broodeth yet. Arise, O morning star, arise and never set. A reading in the Holy Gospel according to St Matthew, in the ninth and 10th chapters, beginning at the 35th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, 
Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from my feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a Sunday in St Mary's Cathedral in Edinburgh about 25 years ago or so when I was a curate there. And we had a guest preacher. I can't remember the preacher's name, but I remember that he was the Secretary General of the Anglican Consultative Council. And I don't particularly remember the sermon, but I do remember how it started. He began his sermon with the question, how do you put a smile on the face of God? And he gave us a moment to think, how do you put a smile on the face of God. And then he gave us his answer. The way to put a smile on the face of God is tell him your plans. And everyone in the cathedral smiled. They smiled at the image of God smiling and saying, do you really think so? I was reminded of that as I was looking at the readings for today, especially the reading about Abraham and Sarah and the visit of the three strangers. Abraham welcomed the strangers, gave them the fullest hospitality that he could, and they made a promise, a promise of the Lord that Sarah would have a son. And Sarah smiled. In fact, Sarah laughed. She laughed in disbelief. Not at her age, she thought. It may well have been a great sorrow to her that she had never had a son. But the suggestion that now she would she perhaps felt mocked and she laughed at it. She laughed at the thought of having a son. But then we're told the Lord fulfilled the promise and Sarah did have a son and Abraham named him Isaac. 
And then Sarah laughed again. She laughed in a different way. It wasn't a laugh of mocking disbelief. It was a laugh of joy. Perhaps still a kind of disbelief that this had actually happened, that she had borne a son. The laughter coming out of that kind of strange disbelief to the joy of the reality. And Paul, in his letter to the Romans, describes a similar kind of process. Paul, when he writes his letters to the early churches, often speaks about the suffering of the present time, the persecution of the church in the Roman Empire. And often in his letters, he commends the various congregations to whom he writes. He commends their strength of faith, their continuing acts of love for one another. But what disappoints Paul is the way that in the church they are losing hope. The joy and the laughter of the new Christian faith has waned and perhaps they've stopped laughing. But, says Paul, even out of suffering, there is a path to hope. That suffering brings endeavour, endeavour, endurance brings character, and out of character, hope comes alive. The hope that comes alive because God's love is poured out. And perhaps what Paul is saying is that God's love is poured out and you will laugh again. And the episode from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus has gathered his 12 disciples and he tells them, I'm giving you authority over unclean spirits, authority to cure every disease and sickness. And he sends them out with that instruction. He says, go out, proclaim the good news of the gospel, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. And he says, do it without any reward. And he sends them out with any, without any financial resources. And he says, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. That sounds like some challenge. And I wonder what the disciples felt. I imagine Jesus might well have had a smile on his face as he gave them that commission. The disciples, I imagine, might have been terrified. They might have been forcing a smile in the excitement that they might be able to do these things, but did they really believe that they could? Did they believe they could carry out Jesus' charge to them? Elsewhere in the Gospel, we're told that the disciples came back excited. They came back telling all that they had been able to do, all that they'd done in Jesus' name. And I imagine there was a lot of laughter. Twelve months ago, I imagine that if someone told us that in 12 months' time, businesses would shut down, aeroplanes would be grounded all around the world, family members would be isolated from one another, not allowed to meet, you couldn't give anybody a hug, you couldn't even shake their hands, there would be hundreds of thousands ill and tens of thousands dying. We might have laughed in disbelief that somebody was saying something so far-fetched. And not because it was something we longed for and thought we might never have, as Sarah thought she would never have a son. Not because it was a challenge like the disciples were to have, 
uh, because if we imagined that it would be really be like that, it would be terrifying. And it has happened. This dreadful situation that we have been experiencing. And perhaps there's not much laughter around. And now if somebody was to say, you will laugh again, things will improve, there is hope things will be better than they were before, we might give a hesitant smile if we dared to hope. Maybe, perhaps, in these situations, even God isn't smiling. But what might make God smile? There is a challenge before us to remain strong in our faith, to be carrying out acts of love to one another, and to complete those three things, faith, love, we have to add hope. And that hope comes from trusting and being hopeful in God's grace, that God will pour out his love upon us as he poured it out on the early church. What puts a smile on God's face is that we are ready to receive that outpouring of love. We're ready to hope that our lives can be made better. We're ready to endure to that point of hope, to allow ourselves to smile as God pours out his love and Perhaps as we smile, God also will smile. Amen. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate as the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus said, Proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heavenly Father, as your Son sent his disciples to proclaim the good news to the people of Israel, we give thanks for all who have proclaimed that same message down the centuries and pray for all called to proclaim it today. For your Church throughout the world in all its forms, for our own Scottish Episcopal Church, Mark, our Bishop and Primus, and the clergy and people of this diocese, and we pray for ourselves in our own calling to be your people, that we may walk humbly with you, 
Choose the paths of righteousness and justice and see your face in the face of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the world struggles with the coronavirus pandemic, with issues of discrimination and injustice, with the devastation of war and the effects of climate change, we pray for your hand to be at work, bringing good from evil and hope to the grieving, the angry and the desolate. For countries where the spread of the coronavirus is out of control, where health services are unable to cope and people have nowhere to turn in their need. For peace in places where war and terrorist attacks continue to rage year on year, almost unnoticed by the wider world. For justice where there is oppression and discrimination. And for all who work for peace, justice and the relief of need, to bring the hope of a better future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold in prayer the leaders of the world's nations, our Prime Minister and First Minister, and all in positions of leadership and responsibility, for a recognition of the common humanity of all people, and wisdom and integrity in their decision-making. For all in our society who work for the good of others, remembering the staff of our National Health Service, Caring Services, Emergency Services and Voluntary Agencies, and those who work to maintain supplies of essential goods. We pray that we may support them and help to build up society by looking for the positives, the signs of the kingdom, and by making constructive suggestions, rather than seeking to drag down by complaint and cynicism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The disciples were sent out to cure the sick. We pray for all in need of your healing and wholeness today for those affected by the coronavirus, for all who suffer in mind, body or spirit, remembering those for whom our prayers have been asked. Jan Campbell, Paula Devlin, Ian Hallam, John McLean, Julia Sinclair, Father Gerald, Sheila Robertson and Stuart Rawsthorn. In a moment's silence, we remember others known to us personally and those whose needs are known only to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to you the souls of all who have died and pray that we may come to share with them in your eternal kingdom. We remember all whose memories are dear to us and those whose year's mind falls at this time. Peggy Lumsden, Peggy Ross and Sally Johnston. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these and all our prayers In the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ sent out his disciples to bring healing and to preach the message of the kingdom, the good news of the gospel. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Tell his praise in song and story, bless the Lord with heart and voice. In my God is all my glory, come before him and rejoice. Join to praise his name together, he who hears his people's cry. 
Tell his praise, come wind or weather, shining faces lifted high. To the Lord whose love has found them, cry the poor in the distress. Swift his angels camped around them, prove him sure to save and bless. God it is who hears our crying, though the spark of faith be dim. Taste and see beyond denying, blessed are those who trust in him. Taste and see in faith draw near him, trust the Lord with all your powers, seek and serve him, love and fear him, live and all his joys are ours. True delight in holy living, peace and plenty lands of days. Come, my children, with thanksgiving, bless the Lord in songs of praise. In our need he walks beside us, Ears alert to every cry, watchful eyes to guard and guide us, love that whispers it is I. Good shall triumph from be righted, God has pledged his promised word. So with ransom saints united, join to praise our living Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy. Thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word, existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. 
Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation, we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this song. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord God, you take Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
And so wherever we are, we gather in prayer and worship. Let us adore forever the most holy sacrament of the altar. And I enjoy, I invite you to join me in this prayer. Lord, you are grace for our needs, strength for our weakness, light for our blindness, word for our deafness, love for our loneliness, joy for our weariness, peace for our anxiousness, wonder for our dullness, saviour for our hopelessness. Lord, you are grace for all our needs. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. And his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who receive the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. The most almighty word, chaos and darkness heard, and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel's day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. The wood is come to breathe on thy redeeming wing, healing and sight. Help to the sick in mind, sight to the inly blind. O now to all mankind, let there be light. Spirit of truth and love, life-giving holy dove, speed forth thy flight. Move on the water's face, bearing the lamp of grace, and in as darkest place, let there be light. Blessed and holy three, glorious trinity, wisdom, love, might, boundless as ocean's tide, rolling in fullest pride through the world, let there be 